Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of the Washington Pain Network. Today's topic is what you need to know about epidural injections. An epidural injection is an outpatient procedure involving steroid and numbing medicine into the epidural space. It's designed to relieve the pain from pinched nerves. The epidural space is the area around the spinal cord where the nerve roots come off. Okay, The medication does not go into the spinal cord. The word epi means around. The word dural means the covering of the spinal cord, so it's around. All right. The indications for an epidural injection is usually a herniated disc causing either radiculopathy or sciatica. So radiculopathy is the overall term for pain coming from a pinched nerve. That could be in the neck or the low back. Sciatica specifically refers to the low back. And here's a herniated, well, it's actually more of a large bulging disc. Pinching on a nerve root, and the redness indicates inflammation. Okay. Now, if you just have degenerative disc disease and irritation of uh, like some cracking or tearing of this outer layer, that can spark up inflammation. So even without pinching, you can get irritation of the nerve root. All right, spinal stenosis, I'll show you in a moment. That involves um, increase of uh, bone and, and soft tissue due to arthritis. That can pinch on nerve roots. Um, and the compression fractures sometimes can cause nerve root irritation. So there are three different types of epidural injections. The oldest type is the interlaminar epidural injection, which you can see here. This was started back in the 1950s. And so epidural injections have been done for over 60 years. Okay. Now here's, uh, we're looking at the spine sort of obliquely. Okay. Here's the back. Here's the side where the nerve roots are coming out. These injections go between the lamina. Here's a lamina. Here's a lamina. Here's a soft area. So it's interlaminar. And the needle goes through this initial soft tissue into the epidural space, and the steroid is injected. The next type is the transforaminal epidural injection. Now, here's where it was before, okay? So what's happening here is the steroid medication is not going in the back between the lamina. It's actually going off to the side, out the area where the nerve root comes. This is called the foramen. There's another one here. Foramen is an opening where the nerve root comes out of the spine. That's where the steroid medication goes because that's closer to the area where it's being pinched most of the time from a herniated disc. Okay, These injections work great. A caudal epidural injection is the third type, and that's where the needle goes at the very bottom of the spine, lumbar, sacrum. Here's an opening called the sacral hiatus. That's where the needle goes. A higher amount of, of uh, steroid is injected, okay, and it migrates up, and it can coat multiple nerve roots and relieve pain that way. Okay, so it's best for an issue like spinal stenosis where you have multiple potential nerve roots being pinched. So this is an outpatient procedure. It takes about 30 minutes. It often involves local numbing. Sometimes IV sedation is given. It's not necessary, though. Um, the modern pain management doctors use real-time x-ray, which is fluoroscopy. They call it a C-arm because it's in the shape of a C, and it gives these images here on the screen showing where the needle is. It is. For the interlaminar injection, they use a technique called loss of resistance. So the hard soft tissue that you go through um, is in back of the, the spine, and then you, you get through that and you feel a loss of resistance. That's the epidural space. At that point, dye is injected to make sure that the positioning is accurate. And if, if it is, then the steroid and the numbing medicine is administered. Patients go home the same day within about an hour afterwards. How well do they work? There have been dozens of studies looking at epidural injections. Overall, 75 to 90 percent good to excellent results. You may need a series of three injections over six weeks to get maximum benefit. So if the first one works okay, you can get the second one. If the second one works great, then you don't even need the third one. But if the first one doesn't help at all, it may be indicated to get a second one to make sure. Um, but So you don't always have to have all three. The numbing medicine works immediately. The steroid usually kicks in between one and three days later, um, and it can last for a few days to upwards of a few months, and then it can be repeated. Are epidural injections FDA approved? They are not FDA approved for use in the spinal canal, and this is not a bad thing. 
Medications are used all the time for off-label indications. Effectively, it's legal, it's often beneficial, and it's done 40% of the time with medications. Here's three examples. Neurontin is FDA approved as an anti-seizure medication. It's used all the time for nerve pain and migraines. Lidoderm is uh, FDA approved as a skin patch for shingles, but it's used off-label all the time for back pain and other numbing needs, such as after surgery. Propranolol is used FDA uh, approved for high blood pressure, but it's used all the time for performance anxiety. All right, so it's not a bad thing at all. The top non-operative pain management in the Washington is with the Washington Pain Network. There are multiple affiliated clinics throughout the state accepting over 50 insurances and providing over 25 treatment options, including all the epidural types we just mentioned. There's over 90% overall success rates at the clinics with the board certified award winning doctors. Visit us online today at WashingtonPainNetwork.com and then call us for more information and scheduling at 877-877-8556. I'm Dr. David Green with the Washington Pain Network. Your pain stops here.